being, oh, I'll tell the first part of the story first because as you can obviously tell, I'm from Hawaii, right? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, I just don't get in the sun very often. Um, I'm actually from England, my background's from England. Um, my wife is from France. We had three, or two, three children born in England and two born in, in the States. So we actually had three nationalities in our family. We just got our green cards uh, three weeks ago. So, so now I actually uh, change sides and now I actually do celebrate the 4th of July instead of... Because uh, <laughs> uh, before, every 4th of July, I'd let my American friends beat me up as a symbolic gesture of the past. <laughs> Only problem is my wife's French and she would join them. And... Uh, <laughs> And then we ended up in Hawaii, so we're a really strange uh, kind of mix. But um, I was at a... Uh, they do a lot of camping in Hawaii. They, they, it's very expensive to leave, so the, the, the people of Hawaii aren't, aren't that, that wealthy. So what they do is once a year, they go, they go for a week camp, only like two miles away from where they live, and they take their entire house with them, and they camp for a week by the beach. It, it was re really pleasant. And uh, so I was there with a bunch of friends. There's like probably 300 of us at this camp by the beach. And uh, there was a dance the first night, and I guess I was dancing a bit. And then I got contacted by some of the other people who said every year, they, apparently, they have a little dance-off between ex-hip-hop guys uh, back from the 80s trying to pretend they're still young, you know. And, uh, and so one of these two, two, two sets of guys said, hey, you need, you need to come and join our team and be our secret thing and come, come out at the end. I was like, oh, do I have to? Anyway, so they wrote me into it. And, um, and I just saw I have the video on my desktop, but you don't want to see it, right? <laughs> you do? Okay. Um, so this is the last part of it. So it, I don't know if you've experienced this. Back in the 80s, it was really f uh, fun when breakdancing was in the first time and when I was young and fit and all of that. And, and you would have these dance-offs where you'd have a team against another team and, and one guy would come out and do something and then on the other side another guy would come out and all of that. So they did this, they repeated this and one was doing a bit and another do was doing a bit. And they did the whole thing until right at the end, one of them, the one that had contacted me, kind of did a move and kind of pointed to me as part of his move. And then this happened. And, and it was so funny because... <laughs> I'm not that good anymore, of course, but um, it's been 25 years since I did this. But it was just out of, just, they just didn't expect it. It was kind of funny. Now you can't take anything else to say seriously at all, but <laughs> but it was so, it was so funny because they just didn't expect it. This was just a strange white guy from, and he said from France. What's that about? I'm not from France. That's an insult. Anyway, on to Canvas. So, <laughs> um, so we started with Canvas. Uh, not even two years ago when we became the first customer. And one of the things that we were doing, and I, I don't think I'll have time to tell this whole story, we started developing a method when I was at uh, BYU Provo of distance education using what we call asynchronous video. And all that means is, is video mail is the other term, where, where students or, or teachers record a video and post it and then watch it and then and do a response in the same method. And we, we originally did that because we wanted, we, I'd been asked to create a new class as well as doing my dissertation, a new online class, and I had two, we had really two main goals. One was to make sure it was flexible, because you need flexibility in, in online education. If you don't have flexibility in time and location, then, then it kind of defeats half of the purpose of having it as a, as a distance class or as an online class. But the second thing that was really important to me was, uh, was relationships, seeing people. Um, I, I think... I've come to the conclusion you can learn skills without a person. You can have a, a computer with no, in, you know, no person interacting with you and, and you can learn skills. But I've always thought that there's something important you get when you're mixing with people. Um, when students, if you think back to your, your uh, elementary school days, and most people have a, fa a, you know, a favorite thing they remember about it, and it's never an assignment that, that I've ever heard. It's always that, that teacher. 
and um, and it's the, it's the relationships we form and and when you when somebody younger is is working with somebody a little bit more experienced with with more wisdom more knowledge uh, better in some way that they it rubs off on them and it's just helpful and it seems to me that just the world is a, is a better place when we do that so i was really keen to retain that visual seeing people knowing people relationships but on online um, but, but we couldn't do anything like uh, um, Skype or live because that defeats the purpose of, of online because as soon as you want have to have a live video discussion it's not flexible anymore you're telling people to be at a certain place at a certain time so we just I just had this idea of I wonder if we could use asynchronous video and this came because uh, I'd moved from England and uh, my family's still in England my wife's are in France and we tried to keep in contact with Skype and other things but I found it a pain in the neck more often than, than not uh, for, for several reasons one was um, either my technology or their technology wouldn't be working at the time we wanted it to, most, mostly on their side. So, so my, my mother's computer wouldn't work at the time we wanted it to, and it was, you know, it was just difficult. And and then um, when we did. Um, Skype, or, or the time zone was a big issue as well. It wasn't the right time for everybody, and so it was awkward sometimes. And then the other thing was, when you go on a Skype, we found that a lot of time you would, it was it was nice, but you'd kind of shoot the breeze a lot, and there was a bit of wasted time. And I ended up, um, because it was difficult, I ended up doing things like shoot, just taking some videos of my kids bouncing on the trampoline, all the fun things that they do, and sending them on, uh, posting them on YouTube. And that seemed to be just as good. In fact, it was it solved all those three problems. Um, the technology only had to have to work on one side at a time. So when their technology was working, they could watch the video. Um, it had no time zone issue. I post it when I want to. They watch it when they want to. And third, I only recorded things that were kind of cool. So it was had quality involved in it, and it was shorter. So it, that just kind of sprung as an idea of I wonder if we could do that in education. And the first time we did it. We, it was it was complicated because we, there wasn't really any good technology to do. I had students. Um, I posted a, in the in the class it was at, which was in Blackboard at Provo. I posted a video introduction of myself on the first uh, first assignment, and then I asked all the students to do a video introduction of themselves. And they had to use um, they just had to email me their file. That caused a lot of problems, but. Um, but they did it, and then I responded within within a day to everybody's email with another vi video of my of myself, just responding back, saying, you know, hi John, uh, thanks for your video. Um, it was really great to hear about that, da, 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 and just gave them a, a personalised response. And then in that um, semester, about two or three times I had them do an assignment instead of writing an assignment I had them present an assignment on video which they sent to me and every, and every time I'd give them a personalized response and with only doing that two or three times in a semester the feedback was kind of astounding the student said things like um, one student said I feel closer to my teacher than I do to any of my face-to-face -face teachers and it kind of took us by surprise I wasn't expecting that we were just kind of experimenting could we get close to having relationships could we form real relationships by this method not only did we form the relationships but they felt it was closer and it kind of made sense after when I thought about it because it was, it was personalized. And it was visual, but it was personalized. How many times would you ever go into a teacher's office, um, you know, two or three times in a semester and have a good discussion um, with a professor? It, it just doesn't happen that way very often. And there's just too many students. It's just, it's, it's just not easy to do. And not only that, if you ever, if you had a, um, if you ask students to come into your office as a, as a teacher, you're not going to spend 30 seconds talking to them. It's just always going to be half an hour, you know, whatever it is, because we just t tend to um, shoot the breeze a lot. But all you really need to say is it could be encapsulated into 30 seconds to a minute. So in a feedback response to a, to a, um, a student, if I said, I, w I looked at your assignment, I thought this it was really excellent, I like this part, I like that part, um, you're doing really well. Um, there was this part I think you could improve on, um, but overall that's, that's excellent, well done. That took me 30 seconds to say, but students love it, because it's it's direct it's personalized it's you've said their name and and they and they feel you know they they get to know you this way and and the other thing i noticed the, the first time i did it is i got to know my students really well um because I saw them talking to me, and they couldn't hide behind uh, being shy in class or, or anything like that. They all had to talk to me, and I got to know all of them much better than I would in a face-to-face -face class. So then, um, at the end of all that, I ended up at BYU Hawaii um, building up their online program, and we just took that as a, as a model that we use for all of the, uh, the, the classes. And we call it the asynchronous video learning model, but it's, it's a really flexible idea. There's no kind of set format. But the idea is, whatever else you already do in a class, on top of that, you, you, you put a layer of this asynchronous video um, where you change, you change some assignments to, uh, to videos instead of writing and you, and you give video feedbacks to students. So it's kind of the, the, the feedback cycle individualized. And what we found is um, no matter what else is underlying the class,
class, even if the rest of the class is boring materials, the fact that you have this, this really close visual feedback cycle enhances everything about the class. So the student, instead of, um, instead of their experience of the class being about the materials, their experience is about the relationship and they really like it. Um, so let me just show you how it works for us. The way we use Canvas, we use the modules approach. I just really like it, it's simple. I can control um, how students flow, flow through it. And we just basically do a top to bottom. You start at the top and you flow through the modules until you reach the bottom of the class. Now we have, let me, let me back up one step. Um, we, we work with students on the mainland in Hawaii and in uh, 50 other countries uh, of the world right now. And so we, right from the beginning we realized we had to have something that was really simple because we don't have, there, there's so many different paradigms in, of learning in the world is we had to have something we could shepherd students through no matter where they were from, no, no matter what they had formally understood. So I like this method where I could, right at the beginning, um, did, uh, there was a question on the first day about um, forcing students to kind of learn about the class before they do the class, and, and this is how we do it. We have a module in every single class at the beginning where they watch some tutorials about the class and they take quizzes. I found that um, especially online, distance education, if, if you put a mat materials up that you think students might want to watch, but there's no points assigned to it, they just won't watch it. It's as simple as that. So we have to, we have to put our points for everything. And um, now, some, some teachers, we ha I have this debate with many teachers, because some teachers feel like that's not the right thing for learning, uh, but we've just found that if you, don't put it, if you don't put some points to it, they won't do it. So another modification of that is make it bonus points. That changes some of the rules that, stu that students are living by, but they, they just ha they're just busy. Um, I don't want to call, say students are lazy, they're really busy, and they're also very economical about their time. Um, I was actually back at sc school, I went back to school at 32 and did my bachelor's, master's, PhD all in one shot in seven years, which I do not recommend. It's crazy, I think I've been insane ever since. But um, the, uh, what I learned from that is that I was exactly the same as those students. I would do what I was required to do and nothing else, because I was really busy. So. The, the idea of these students who are just at university or anywhere else because they love the idea of learning, as I don't see that in many students anymore. I think there are students that have that ideal, but they're just too busy and there's too many requirements on their time. So, so we, we, we give them quizzes after everything they watch just to make sure they're accountable for it and then they can carry on with the class. So that's the layout of the class. So I'm gonna go into the, the student introductions. So this is where I would, uh, so students will, you know about the media uh, through Kaltura, so students will play a video. Um, this, is, this is a class I teach. That's low, we, we don't need to hear it, but you get the point. It's a video introduction, tell them about myself, about the class, and then I have all the students introduce themselves. So it was really interesting. When I first did this, the students sent their videos to me and I responded to them. And what we found is they had a really strong relationship with me, but not with the other students. Right at the beginning of the class, we'd given them a paradigm. It's the, it's the teacher and the individual student. So now what we do is the, the introductions are, so they see my introduction, but then they're asked to introduce themselves to the class. And then they're, they're required to respond to at least two other students. So um, this is an introduction by a student. And these are responses to that, that student. And Really, I just want to, um, it's just easier just to show, to show this. This is a student from uh, Thailand who's introducing herself. Hello, everybody. My name is Vera Hong Sinwensai. Uh, I come from Thailand. Uh, I live in Buriram City. Rural city is a very, very small, very small city. Uh, no, no uh, McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> That's the measure now for how big your city is. No uh, restaurant. Um, my hobby is uh, reading books and. Watching, watching movies. My favorite movie is a uh, action movie and comedy. Uh, I have a plan to attend BYU Hawaii. I would like to be social worker. I I would like to help uh, other people who need help. Uh, People are uh, the means uh -huh, 
don't have food, don't have uh, clean water, uh, very poor, uh -huh. I'm grateful for this, I'm grateful for this course. Thank you for watching. <laughs> So can you imagine that response you've just had if you read that in a text? Uh, it's, just, it's just so obvious to me, because as soon as I saw that, I, she, I'm just charmed by this you know, young lady in Thailand. And you just get to see their personalities coming out. And so the students are seeing each other. And then, uh, so this is, uh, is that the right one? No, that's not the right one. I only have till 35, right? Whoever's keeping the clock. No, it is. Okay, I'm going to skip that. But the students respond to each other and make connections. And right from the beginning, when we watch that, it's really fun to watch. If you, so the whole page is full of students who are talking to each other at the right at the beginning of the class, and they just form these connections. And they could be anywhere in the world. And what, what I notice about that is the distance, the geographical distance, is basically eliminated because they, they're seeing each talking to each other as if they were really close. And, uh, and it's just fun to see those connections. So then, throughout the class, this whole class is full of assignments where they are speaking in the video. So now we use, it, we use two different, at least two different kinds of, of uh, video assignments. One is just the assignment. We use an assignment which is where um, only the teacher will see, see the video. So if we want a student to present some knowledge of some kind and we don't want them to, them to show each other, each other, then it would be an assignment. And so all of these, all of these assignments in Unit 1 um, are, are videos that they have to respond to. Let's just pick one. Um, so this one, Introduction to the Science of Change, where we talk about um, neuroscience and how it affects change. And so that there's, there's some videos for them to watch. Typically our classes like this, there's either some link to an, an e-book or there's a link to, a, um, to some, some videos. And the third one is my video I've, I've created. And then um, they have these questions they have to answer. They can see the questions before they actually do the assignment. And we have this pattern a lot in our classes. Um, but once they start the, the video, they're not allowed to refer to notes. So they have to be looking into the camera and we can tell the difference. So those are the questions they have to be able to answer. What we tell them is you can look back at the screen for the next question, but when you answer it, you have to be looking at the camera, not at any notes. So they answer all those 13 questions in a video, which helps me know whether they, they've understood it. And a lot of those questions are kind of discussion questions. So the last uh, the two or th um, three at the end allow them to kind of elaborate on their own understanding. And then, dis and then we have um, discussions. So I'm going to pull into a discussion where, just like you've seen in the introductions, and you can, you can think up a thousand different ways of using this, but in this case what we do is we say the same thing. is You're going to present your own knowledge on a topic, and then you're going to respond to two students, and you're going to, um, we give them a variety of different assignments. One is, sometimes we tell them you've got to, you've got to find something to disagree with, or at least um, articulate an alternative theory. And so they have to actually exchange with each other. So you get a whole class who are actually talking to each other in a class discussion. And the thing we, we noticed about this, this wasn't deliberate, but we did it because we had to because it was online, but we noticed, so this has got about 40 students in the class, and every one of them is presenting an idea, and every one of them is, is listening to and responding to other students. And I often ask this question of, uh, of in-class teachers is, could you do that? Could you do that in a class of 40 students? Could you have, in, in an hour session, can you have every student um, um, present for three minutes, and every student then have two other students respond to them and give them and debate with them? And it's a practical impossibility. So there are actually some interesting ways which uh, online can uh, can leverage. It, it can it can give you more sometimes than a face-to-face -face classroom. It's different. I'm I'm never one who says it's one's better than the other, but I think there are some some uh, advantages of online situations. You could do that. You could have a face-to-face -face class and do that. We have a teacher at BYU Hawaii who saw this method and he started having students do videos before coming to class because he, he found that nobody reads books anymore, nobody reads the textbook. Uh, they, they do whatever they can to do the minimal amount of work and, and kind of risk, they, 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 I guess they decide on what risk they're going to put into it. Um, so he was, his classes were discussion based but his students weren't prepared, prepared for class. So he started requiring students to do a video before coming to class presenting their understanding of a reading and, and then in class he then discusses it and he said it's changed his entire um, entire world because now they're all prepared because they have to be and they're accountable. 
and uh, so that's the discussions and then what do students say about it let's go to the spreadsheet I'm going to go up to the top. I just pulled out all of the, the comments that have come back about this particular class. We have a, we have a particular survey that students do after any of our online classes. And um, I, I put that one at the beginning because some student... Th this question is an open-ended question as part of the survey. What worked well in the class? They also have a what didn't work, what should be improved. But somebody just said, instructor is great. I thought you guys might like to hear that. And, uh, but all the other comments are all about uh, the videos. They liked it. You know, they explain why... Um, um, and very rarely do we have a student who doesn't like it. What we typically find is that students are uncomfortable with the idea at the beginning, and then they get they, they like it at the end. And and we ask them if they prefer to write. It's one of the survey questions, and and a vast majority of students say no, they wouldn't prefer to write. Um, and then we get to some some comments that kind of just took me by surprise. The the last the last comment, for example, this student is saying in the four years they've been at BYU Hawaii that they got more connected in the online class than in any face-to-face -face class which is pretty astonishing because BYU Hawaii has, has class sizes of 15, 10, 20 really small class sizes and and then this student said probably a lot more than I would have in a classroom because we were forced to, 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 to share each other's thoughts um, but <laughs> And I'd say encouraged, but okay. Um, and this student halfway through, so, she, uh, so this person is saying uh, this is the first time where the teacher would present and then the students would get the opportunity to make a video response. Um, this class has made me, th this class has made me feel more involved than any other class. And these, these really took us by surprise. I was not expecting this. I wasn't expecting students to say this is better. And we also ask a question of students, um, would, you, would you prefer only online classes or only face-to-face? -face? And what I'm noticing is every semester the, the response gets closer. It's still just face-to-face -face wins, but it's getting closer all the time, which is really fascinating to me. I think a lot of that's to do with this, the, the, the generations and what they're used to. A lot of what, ha what we like is what we are used to from when we were young. So the students who are coming up now, my... my uh, um, three-year-old uses a mouse, can, can uh, get on websites, and that just is astonishing to me. So anything technology-based is, is very familiar to them. Um, I'm going to run out of time really fast. Let me just show you the... Oh, another thing. So another... Th uh, let's go to the Survey Monkey responses. Um, this, is, this is just a couple of questions where we ask students, you know, to, to decide whether they had opportunities to express ideas and hear other ideas. This is hitting a 3.87 and a 3.93 on a four-point scale, which is pretty, you know, that's really, really, really high for response. And the ones who, who were down in the strongly degree, I know who these are, and they, hate, they hated something else about the class. They're one of these students who just clicked bad, 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 bad about everything because they were upset about something else. Um, so really this is it's pretty astonishing to me that uh, they would respond that way. Um, but it opens up expression, and, ability, and students really like seeing each other. They really like talking to each other. They really like hearing each other's ideas. And that, that layer sits on top of anything else that there is. So we typically, we develop classes really fast because we, 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 we take an on-campus on class as it, as it exists. We put it into Instructure as close as possible to its original form and tweak a few things as necessary, change a few assignments to be, be speak, uh, presentations. And then, and then you add the, the, the feedback. I, I haven't got time to show you that, but, but, but the teachers or tutors give video um, feedback responses to the students um, as well. And last, I'm just going to show you this video in this debate, just so you can see how they talk to each other. I've missed it. That was my favorite. No, it wasn't her. It was him. And this is kind of fun, because this student is off campus right now, um, and he's in a place in the United States. I didn't know a place like this, this existed in the States, but he hasn't got internet where he lives. And uh, are, we, are we done? Two seconds, minutes, okay, hours. Um, and uh, he, uh, he has to go to another town, to the McDonald's, to get the internet signal to upload his, his videos. So he always does, he, he records his videos in really interesting places, sometimes in his car, sometimes. It's just really fun to see people in their environment. <laughs> Hey George, um, I'm going to debate one of the things that you said in your video. Um, and that is that you talked about the engine to get your hands on the and how we do that to do that. Um, I think that, what, that on the whole, I, I 
I do agree with what you said. But for this particular part of your video about the Lemon Passport and about similar types of situations, I think that this can be made a lot better through the use of video or audio. I'm not, I'm not going to show the whole thing. We have running out of time, but the point is that, uh, that they, they do. If we ask them to, they do debate, they do disagree, and they, and they get the opportunity to do it with, with everyone. And they can do it from anywhere in the world. So that's, that's really it. Uh, any, any questions? Or Go ahead. Is this Kaltura available to all the students in the format of Uniform Cross? Yes. Yes. So, right, Kaltura is embedded into Instructure. In fact, the, the fun story behind that is when, when, when uh, the salespeople from Instructure contacted us on campus and they knew one of the VPs got in touch with me and I was like, oh, somebody's trying to sell us something, okay. And I did, had a demo and I thought, I thought this is really neat. Um, but it doesn't have video in it and my whole program is based on video. I'd actually programmed my own solution to be embedded into Blackboard which worked, worked pretty well and I said I'm not, I'm, I like your product but I'm not interested unless you do video. So two weeks later they came back and had embedded Kaltura into Instructure and the rest is history. So now every, every customer has Kaltura embedded into uh, Canvas for free. Thank you.